What is good? It's me and my main man, Austin, back in the house. What's good, Austin? What's up, man? How you doing, Casey? Oh, excited to be here. We got a little 25, way too early, first round rookie mock. Super flex tight end premium 1.5 will be the parameters of this exercise. And of course, it is very early. This will change a ton, but wanted to have some fun. We've been doing a little bit of series with the wide receivers and with the running backs and getting you more familiar a little earlier uh, this year. So we figured it'd be fun to do a little first round. The college season is what, about halfway over right now? Uh, and, and we know how fast things can change in three or four games as far as prospect touting goes in this arena here. So uh, we're going to go pick by pick. We're going to do 12 picks. First round of a super flex set and premium rookie mock. We got Austin Abbott over there. If you're not following him on Twitter, like the rest of the world, it's Austin Abbott FF, two B's, two T's, two F's. I'm Casey Myers. This is the FF Dynasty. Let's get it. All right. I'm going to take pick one because you offered it to me. I'm usually a, an unselfish lover. I'll usually, you know, let you go first. Uh, but I'm going to go Ashton Genty right here off the rip. I know this is super flex. I know this is, you know, tight end premium. Tight end class maybe a little on the low end. We, we might end up with one or two that people are really excited about, but not, not a whole lot of tight ends to get too excited about as we speak. And there are certainly some quarterbacks to get pretty fired up about. I think generally people are viewing this as a bit of a weaker quarterback class, but I find this to be, be end up being a, you know, run of the mill, pretty decent quarterback class, just like everything, you know, by the end of the season, we'll be excited about some guys. And by the, by the end of the draft cycle, this, this class will suck. And it's all about the 26 class, but I didn't go quarterback here. I went running back and I, you know, I, I love running backs and I don't care who knows it. And it seems like maybe we're having a little bit of a running back renaissance potentially. And Genty could be just what the doctor ordered here for a lot of fantasy managers uh, he's putting up insane numbers. It's just out of this world. Doesn't even make sense. My guy's got 1,200 yards already. He's got 9.9 per attempt. He's got 17 <laughs> TDs. Like, I just, what are we doing? Like, I, that's not even, those are video game numbers, right? I'm taking the playmaker. There was probably a quarterback you could have slid in here. You could have probably taken a, a wide receiver. You can make an argument for one, two, or three of those guys. But I just, I just went, I just feel like I'm not screwing it up. At this point, I, I feel pretty safe about this pick moving forward for the rest of this draft cycle. So uh, I went Genty here. Hey, averaging a first down per carry is absurd, man. <laughs> I mean, I think the only question here is, does he win the Heisman? It, I mean, yeah. is you know, he's a running back, obviously. Uh, you know, it, it's a good I, segue. I feel like, real, I feel like the, it's sorry, a good segue on, real quick to mention Travis Hunter, because I do. I think yep. Travis Hunter should probably what he was doing is probably the most impressive thing in general, like he's the best player in college football that he's so good on both sides of the ball, but we're kind of probably leaving him off this list because we're just not sure where it's going to end up. You know, if he's going to play receiver or not at the next level, right? Yeah, no, so I think didn't, didn't mean to cut you point. off, but it felt like that was good, good product placement, a uh, little Heisman mention there. So continue on uh, Austin. No, for sure. I was just going to say, I mean, I, I think it's a valid question, man. Like, does he win the Heisman? I mean, literally averaging a first down per carry and, and you Casey, you said it best, like video game type of numbers. Like you look at them and you're like, is this Derrick Henry in, in high school? Like, like, no, like this, yeah. this can't be college. Like this is, this is insane. But yeah, yeah man, I'll, uh, Casey, I'm going to pivot. I'm going to start yapping about the one Oh two. All right. I have Ted McMillan here, man. I think here's the only player I would probably put in the same tier with him. Obviously they're different positions. Ted McMillan being a wide receiver, Janty being the running back. I just mean, I think I think McMillan, I'm okay with putting him in this tier. I feel as if McMillan is kind of in a tier on, on his own pertaining to the wide receiver position. I think he's really separated himself from the other wide receivers in this class. I mean, 6'5", 212. He's currently a junior at Arizona. Now, listen, like true freshman season back in 2022, Ted McMillan, he led all first-year players nationally with yeah. over 700 yards, 39 receptions and eight touchdowns. Let's go. Let's go to the very next year. Sophomore season, 130 targets as a sophomore. Are you kidding me, man? 90 receptions. I mean, these are like, like top tier numbers for, for a junior or, or senior, like final season in college. He did this as a sophomore, just shy of 1400 yards, 10 touchdowns. And you want to talk about this year as a junior, man, 
10 receptions, 304 yards in week one. Like this, I, I, granted, it was against New Mexico, but he set the tone, right? Like Ted McMillan told everybody, look, like I've been close to the consensus wide receiver one for a while, but now you know 100% that I am the wide receiver one in this class. I'm in a tier of my own. If if I had to kind of draw a line, make a player comp, man, I, I really see like a Roma Dunze, a Drake London to give you an idea in that type of range. You, But when you're watching the film, Casey, like when you're watching these games, he moves way better than he should, I should say. Right. Right. Like, yes. like for someone who's 6'5", 212, like he should not be able to move like he does. Uh, that That's really all I have to say about Ted McMillan, man. I, I feel so confident in him. If you have the 101 or 102 in this 2025 class, like, please hang on to it. Please, please hang on to that pick. There's been plenty of trashing of maybe this draft class not being as strong, maybe quarterback position, but the the, the, the top ones, once again, are, are going to end up being really, really strong here because I think there's, there's a few other receivers that I really like, and then there's a bunch of running backs that I like here. Um, and that'll all kind of sort itself out. And like I said, there's there's going to end up being probably two or three quarterbacks that everyone's going to really be loving by the end of this cycle. So I, I agree with you. So I'll keep it moving. Going 103 here. Going to take the first quarterback off the board. I'm going Shador Sanders um, as okay. the first QB off the board here. That could be controversial for some people. Some people may not like, you know, the kind of aura and, and stuff that all surrounds Shador Sanders from – you know, kind of what's going on at college, the way his collegiate arc has kind of gone. But I mean, the play on the field has been outstanding. I think he throws an excellent football, taking a lot of sacks. Some of that can be blamed on the offensive line, uh, which hasn't been outstanding throughout his tenure at Colorado and and potentially at Jackson State there. You know, he's thrown for over 2,000 yards this year. He's got 17 touchdowns. He can move around really well. I just feel like he's going to end up being a high pick. I don't think you're screwing this up. Some of these other quarterbacks, you're not really sure where they're going to end up in the, in the draft cycle, like somebody like Cam Ward, which I think we'll get to at some point in this first round, uh, some context clues. Some people are even uncertain if he's going to be a first rounder. I, I pretty much could lock in Shador Sanders being maybe even a top five pick, right, to the right franchise. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, I, you know, I think, I think Shador is an easy layup pick here just because you know – as far that there's going to be some high draft capital associated with him. And he's got all the tools on the field to go along with that from, you know, watching plenty of Colorado games with Shador Sanders and his play style. So excellent quarterback, I think. So if, if he's not your flavor of human being, so be it, but we're playing fantasy football. So uh, I'm going to take the guy that I think is, is the most qualified to score the most points. So I'm taking Shador Sanders as the first quarterback off the board who you got next at the 104 Austin. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free discord channel or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP and player pages all for your pleasure. No, I like that, Casey. And I'm going to follow you here. I'm going to take another quarterback at the 104 with Jalen Milrow. So when I think of Jalen Milrow, like one of the most impressive things, I, I would argue it's his ability to overcome adversity, right? Here's a guy who's had a roller coaster of a collegiate career. And, and you know, his book is still not done, man. He's, he's still, you know, there's still more chapters and he's still taking leaps forward. We're starting to see him now for a third consecutive season, which, which I absolutely love, man. This third consecutive season of him taking positive strides in the passing game, right? That was one of my biggest concerns. I just finished up earlier today. I was watching some interviews on, on Jalen Milrow. I thought he was really well-spoken. I thought he was humble. Yeah. I thought he was very knowledgeable and I think he has a really solid head on his shoulders. Now, like this, this is stuff that matters to me, man, especially in my evaluations, my personal evaluations, right? Like I want to make sure that not only are you physically gifted, you know, and, and a solid player with good work ethic, but I want to make sure that your head's on straight. I want to make sure that you have good character. You know, this, you know, it's all part of the equation, right? For sure. Um, and uh, I just, I would argue that, you know, without question, Jalen Milrow is, he's one of the biggest risers so far this season. But yeah, like I mentioned, taking a leap forward every year in the passing game. I, I think that's kind of what matters most here. Uh, it's what we needed to see. And that's reality, right? That that was very reassuring, wildly explosive athlete, uh, you know, 6'2". He, he's, he's just built like a unit. 
I just, I like what I'm seeing, man. And I, I think things are going to continue to get better. A uh, really good completion percentage this season. So I'm, I'm rooting for Jalen Milrow, man. I'm in his corner and I, I want him to continue to take strides forward. I just, I think Alabama is a lot of fun this season. Yeah. You, you add DeBoer in there with, with Alabama. Obviously they have one of, if not the greatest college coach of all time and Nick Saban leaving that program and DeBoer comes in and, uh, just bringing a really, really solid offensive scheme. Alabama is going to be good for another really long run here. Yeah. Uh, but Milrow was somebody who who last year really did need to rely on the legs. So I was when you made this pick, I said, whoa, 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 whoa. This, this really took me by surprise. <laughs> but you have you have seen a good bit of growth from Milrow's play. Now you still see times where there's laps in judgment of of how this should be played and what should be going on, and maybe the processing isn't quite where it needs to be consistently uh but right as far as the tools for a player right there for what you're looking in fantasy production milro could give that to you now you know i don't think he was sniffing the first round before this year uh, but it seems like he may be kind of like we talk about cam ward there now maybe working his way you know teams will talk themselves into somebody now this last game against south carolina had a couple of questionable spots in the game there where it's like hey, you, you got to be a little bit better than this and we expect you to be a little bit better than this week in week out but did, did end up getting the dub and I've, I've been impressed with Milrow for the most part throughout the season when he was somebody who I had kind of written off as an NFL prospect so that, that that's that's what you want to see right you saw growth you saw a big jump you saw a big leap and you know what DeBoer and Grubbs were doing in in Washington was essentially very pro style and very complicated so you know, I don't know where they're at just yet in Alabama and kind of all that being inundated. But, you know, I think Milrow, we've seen nice leaps and bounds and, and some really good tools. So I may not love it. And it took me off guard a little bit, bit but I can I can I can get with it. And it's fucking October. So uh, <laughs> that's that's the point of what we're doing. So at number five, I'm going to go Luther Burden, the third here. This is really just my flavor of receiver. I like the way this guy operates. Super strong after the catch. Really solid route runner. When when we did this, well, actually I think I might do this one by myself. You know, I'm not I'm not saying that he's he's Debo, uh, but he he kind of gives you those vibes where if you, you could just get it in his hands, he mm -hmm. could thwart you off of him. He can make you miss, and he can go the distance. But don't get it twisted that that he is a very solid route runner. Uh, and so the, these guys are my kind of uh, kryptonite here, the, the, the style of play and the, and the style of receiver that, that Luther Burden is here. So that might be a blind spot for me, but I feel like a lot of other people have had Burden pretty high up coming through here, if not the, the, the one or two wide receiver, one or two kind of coming into the season. I don't think he's been putting up gaudy numbers by any means. I think that they're, they're spreading the ball around. And there's another wide receiver down there who's, who's putting up a, a nice season as well. I'm drawing a blank on his name right now, but maybe it'll it'll come to me. Wheeze Wise uh, down in in Missouri, who's who's also having a nice a nice season. But Burden, if he if he were to get in the NFL and get into one of those Shanahan style offenses that's very prevalent all over the league right now, that's doing well, and you slot him into a Debo Samuel style role, Jaden Reed style role right now, I think he can come out and be just an excellent player right off the rip. So I'm going Luther Burden uh, at the 105. So. Who you got, or you want to touch on Burden, or you want to go to 106 here? No, man, that's a, a solid pick. I, I don't want to call it chalk, but I, I kind of felt like you were going to you were going to take him there. I was considering him the pick before, but uh, no, I, I can support that. I can get behind that, man. Uh, 106, Quinshawn Judkins. I'm taking another running back Love here. It. Or sorry, did I take a running back yet? Uh, no, I did not. Yep. Uh, I took Jalen Milrow at 104. 106, Basically a running back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. 106, Quinshawn Judkins, six foot, 220. King sizest over here, Casey. You know, mm -hmm. you know, I like him big, man. Pause. I was on Braylon I, uh, Allen early <laughs> and often. <laughs> Dude, looking pretty good. But uh Quinjon yeah. Judkins, man, talk about a player who just went absolutely nuclear to start his collegiate career. Now, he this was it really did catch me and I, I would say the entire nation off guard when he transferred this year. We have Quinshawn Judkins playing his first two seasons at Ole Miss, then transfers. This year, Ohio State now, dude, north of 1,500 rushing yards as a true freshman, 16 touchdowns, just shatters every record ever at Ole Miss. Uh, following year, you know, north of 1,100 rushing yards, 15 touchdowns, regressed a little bit, but 
still looks like an absolute baller. It really surprised me, you know, obviously, and maybe we'll get to him a little bit later. Travion Henderson, man, him coming back. Mm. And then, you know, Quinshawn going to Ohio State. Like, like there's, you know, what, how, what was the NIL deal like? Like, there's a lot of variables that come into play. And I just didn't expect things to turn out the way that they did. Um, but Quinshawn, man, he's fun to watch. I, I think, you know, he's... I don't really like to throw around the term workhorse. I know it's become much more of a running back by committee, unfortunately, in today's world, especially in the NFL. But I view Quinjon Judkins as a legit, legitimate workhorse, right? Like, I think he's a rare combination of, of, you know, a lot of things you like to see between, you know, again, size, speed, power, and the production's been there. I want to throw out a few player comps. I know I did earlier in, in the podcast when, when I was yapping about um, Ted McMillan, but, but, one for Quinshawn Judkins that comes to mind, honestly, a guy like Tank Bigsby, man. Tank mm. Bigsby's been really hot in the NFL lately. Another guy who's very gifted physically. I think, you know, he resembles him in a lot of ways. Now, granted, I hope he goes on and, and I believe he's going to go on to have significantly more success than what, you know, Tank has done. I'm not comparing him in that regards, but I just meant their physical traits. They, they reminded me a lot of one another, maybe even like uh, everybody close your ears, but uh, like Rashad White a little bit, mm. you know, <laughs> granted, I, I again think he's going to be significantly better than him. But uh, I really like what we've seen from Judkins in the past. And I, I know this year has been a little bit more difficult, right? And obviously he's playing, you know, against better collegiate defenses. He's playing against, or at least on a team that has much more talent at the running back position where he's not, you know, 110% the focal point of their offense. Yeah. Right? Obviously Ohio State is always going to be super gifted, right? That team is always going to be stacked really from top to bottom. So uh, it's interesting to see how things have played out so far this season, but I am, I'm not deterred. I'm not concerned. I am very much in and very high on Quinchon Judkins. Casey, anything that you'd like to comment? Yeah, I mean, there, there. You like you pointed it out in the beginning. Uh, Travion came back and you know kind of made this a, a weird backfield. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's probably hurting both of their overall productions. You know, I think I think both players are, are both really strong, and I, I really like Judkins when he was over there at Ole Miss with with our guy uh, Zach Evans uh, for a minute <laughs> yeah. there. It kind of a surprising transfer to me to, to Ohio State there where and Judkins burst on the scene as a freshman and being really good. So now that he's eligible, I mean, you got to be really excited about him. I thought I was going to come into this draft and be running back heavy. And just because I'm all in on the backs and I like a lot of these backs this year, we're not even going to get to half of the ones that I really like. But yeah, I like the pick with Judkins there. I think I think he's I think he is a workhorse and he, I, you know, a, a decent pass catcher as well. All right, I'm going to keep it moving. I'm going 107. I'm going to stick with the quarterbacks. I went, well, you know, thought I was going to go all running backs, but apparently I'm going all quarterbacks. I'm going Quinn Ewers here. I know this is probably the pick that most people will hate on in this draft so far, at least. But, you know, I didn't, I didn't hate Quinn Ewers nearly as much as everybody did last year. I thought Quinn Ewers played some really good games with Sark. Uh, last year, and then I thought he was really make, taking steps forward to operate in this offense at a really high level through those first three weeks. And then obviously the injury uh, comes back for the Red River rivalry. Wasn't much of a contest there. Uh, Texas is is a wagon right now and, and really flexing on a lot of people. Be interesting to see that Georgia matchup here coming up. Excited for that. College football has been so much fun this year. Anybody talking about how the 12-team playoff was going to hurt anything is crazy. I think this is going to be so exciting Every game, every week, there's there's some great games. It feels like there's the most parity we've ever seen uh, throughout college football. Quinn Ewers was also a really highly touted uh, prospect coming out, right? And and you know went, yeah. went to Ohio State, then then to Texas, and now you know Arch Manning is is we've been dying to get him. We caught a little bit of Arch Manning for a little while. Quinn's back in there, um, and I think Quinn's gonna you know, have a nice ascension and a nice end of the season, and and have a lot of people really loving some Quinn Ewers by the end of the end of the year now might not be the quarterback for fantasy that everybody's been loving with the legs recently but I do think he's he's got a good processing brain and can make all the throws out there and I, I again I know some people disagree with me and, and don't really like Ewers and think he stinks and uh, there was a lot of shitting on him through the AD Mitchell and Worthy process and I'm like man I watched a lot of Texas games and I, th I, th I thought Ewers played really well throughout the season last year and I think he was playing even better this season so uh, I'm going Quinn Ewers there man F what you heard yeah, yeah right 
No, man. Um, I, I, I don't know. I think, I think some people are going to be on board with you. I, th- I think that uh, some people could definitely get behind that, man. Uh, Quinn yours is Quinn yours. I feel like he's always going to be a, one of the more polarizing type of prospects, right? Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's just kind of how it is, man. That's reality. Uh, I'm going to move on. Casey, what am I up? 108 right here. Right. 108 baby 108 i'm gonna take i'm gonna take my guy omarion hampton Ooh, man people are I, loving him right now i love omarion hampton oh boy i he's he is one of one of the most fun running backs to watch in all of college football i've i was really high on him last year uh god i mean six foot 220 pounds 21 years old i love this kid we saw him as a sophomore just just really tear apart collegiate defenses. I mean, 234 attempts over 1400 rushing yards, 15 touchdowns, I mean, 16 total touchdowns, right? It doesn't even include his 26 receptions, 215 receiving yards, right? People love to see that 20 reception threshold. He crushed that again. This is as a sophomore Casey, right? Uh, so, so we're talking, you know, North of 1600 total yards, 16 touchdowns, 6.2 yards per carry, this all happened in his first full collegiate season. This was 12 games. This is special type of production, man. This really may come off as a hot take, Casey, but if he ended up being like a top 10 dynasty running back in one to two years from today, it wouldn't surprise me, right? I yeah. think that's I think that's a realistic outcome for him. Like I think Omarion Hampton is, is one of the He's- more gifted running backs in one of the best running back classes we've seen in a while. So like yeah. that's, that's why I'm out here yapping about him and really giving him high praise. I mean, and and I know he's crushing this year. Right? He's on he 42 missed tackles, four star. I mean, he's about to set career highs across the board this year. But I want to go back to last year again as a sophomore. I want to talk about it a little bit more. His final eight games, 18 touches, 103 yards. I mean, 26 touches. 217 yards. Uh, I'll just I'll just rip off of the yards for the remaining games. It was 131, 194, 143, 216, 178. Uh, he's scoring basically over a touchdown a game. I, the, again, the production's just it's stupid. Uh, and this unreal stretch doesn't even include his best game, which was against uh, Appalachian State, where he had. 244 yards mm. and three touchdowns, right? And I just, you know, you turn on the tape, man. I think he's very well put together. I think he's an all-around running back. You know, the the legs, they just don't stop moving with a Marion Hampton. Great cuts. Uh, you know, he has an elite frame. You know, the the patience of a Marion Hampton is world-class, right? That mm. is my biggest takeaway. Uh, I, I just, I, I think we're going to see him go on to be, you know, a mid to maybe early 2025 first round pick. I think he's really going to be a star one day, man. I love his play style. Yeah, he's, just, he's out in them streets right now for sure. Oh, so I'm I'm very, very bullish on a Marion Hampton. And I think yeah. it's just going to get better, man. I think people are going to become even more bullish. So Casey. Yeah. Well, like you said, I mean, I think there's some really good running backs in here and, and the, the, the legend of them will grow. I think as as time goes on here through this season, you know, we're not even going to get to some of the other great wide receivers either. But for the next pick, I'm going to take Cam Ward. Uh, so we kind of okay. alluded to him a little earlier. Maybe people were unsure about him coming from Washington State would always kind of fall apart, have some really good runs and then and then really not be able to get it done in the big games. Well, he's he's figured out a way to engineer wins in every game so far. Uh, Miami has being a, a, a really strong contender week in, week out. And now they've had they've had some games where they've had to uh, get a little lucky and, and fight some adversity. But that's kind of part of of the course here. And, and Cam Ward has, has been a big part of that, like. He's so interesting to watch play quarterback. He's so like, he just feels like he's just fucking whistling Dixie back there. He's just having a, he's just <laughs> chilling. Like he's just seems very yeah. calm. Like he just really just, oh, yeah, we're just chill. I'm gonna find this guy. Here we go. Bang. Got him. Uh, and he's, he's thrown for 2,200 yards, 10.4 an attempt, 20 TDs, five interceptions. I think he's putting together a really good campaign to, to get himself in that first round. As far as processing and putting the ball where it needs to go, he's got a great release that comes out of his hand. He throws a really nice ball, mobile enough. Uh, I, I really like watching Cam Ward play football. He's played a lot of it. I mean, he's he's a little older at this point. I think he'll be 23 through this draft cycle. He might be 22 now. Um, so maybe some people hold that against him. But I, I think we're seeing 
you know, some of the older quarterbacks, you know, be maybe more coveted. Obviously, you know, you would like the young tools or whatever, but like the guys who have played some more games and have more experience come into the NFL, which I feel like has always been viewed as a negative or at least over the last few years because they're a little older and why didn't they come out sooner and yada, yada, yada. But, you know, Jaden Daniels, I think, really helps helps that, you know, mold go forward. Joe Burrow was somebody who helped that mold go forward. Now, I don't think Cam Ward's putting up Heisman-like numbers like those guys are, although Cam Ward is certainly in the Heisman conversation, right? If Miami goes undefeated oh, yeah. and, and gets in the playoffs, and it's always the best quarterback on a good team, right? Not nine times out of ten, which is why it would be super special if Genty or Travis Hunter won it. But, you know, I, I like Cam Ward a lot. I think he's going to continue to rise, continue to make his way through this the mud of, of this whole, you know, this whole cycle. I, I think he's going to really keep ascending throughout this entire cycle that we're, that we're going through right now. And, and some people may have him as a fringe first rounder, but I think there's going to be enough teams needy uh, and, and Cam Ward is going to put enough body of work together to say, Hey, yeah, we'll, we'll take that guy uh, and be able to shape him in to an NFL passer here. So uh, I'm going, I'm going Cam Ward here at one Oh nine. I love it, man. I'm up at the 110. I'm taking Nick Singleton. I'm mm. going, I'm sticking with this running back theme, man. Another big running back, six foot, 228, right? Junior right now at Penn State. I think he's Casey. I, I want to, I want to get into the fun stuff, man. I think he could run into like, like the, the high four threes, man, like a four, three, nine. It wouldn't, it would not surprise me to see him move like that. You know, Nick Singleton. He's really like this dual role running back. He's capable of doing a lot of damage through whether it's through the air with his legs. Uh, now, here's a five star recruit again, like like the size is there, man. We saw the production right away that freshman year from him. And that was some special stuff, right? Like, like, yes, still to this day, it is his best season. I'm hoping he can, you know, ultimately, you know, reach ca- career high numbers this this current year. But it really doesn't even matter to me a whole lot, man. Like, like it's it's more about the film. It's about uh, how he benefits Penn State. Uh, I think that you know we're seeing him, you know, just just simply be a leader in the locker room as well, right? Like, not everything comes down to the box score, obviously. Not mm-hmm. everything comes down to the statistics. But uh, Nick Singleton, he's got it all, man. Again, over a thousand rushing yards as a as a freshman, 156 carries, 12 touchdowns. Now he did have three fumbles. It's nice to see that number regress, right? Going from two last year, and right now he currently has zero on the season. So that's something that I found very impro- very appealing. His yards per out run, like if you want to talk about his receiving uh, ability, that's improved great. each year, yeah. right? So uh, uh, some uh, one point six four, like that's a good number, man. That's a really good number, yeah, right there. Just, just watching him catch balls and 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 you know be a weapon for them in spots. I really like Singleton, and like you said, the production isn't you know maybe where where you think it might be for a prospect like him uh, but they're, yeah. they're you know they're splitting carries through they're kind of like you know judkins and henderson a little bit uh through the penn state so sorry i didn't mean to cut you off there but no no i, I just mentioned a few more things but again like like what you said is all factual right i, I thought that whether it was him being a quality receiver out of the backfield uh it, excelling in pass protection right that can't be talked about enough man and that's mm. so important casey because when you excel as a you know blocker you're going to be on the field significantly more yeah, and that's going to lead sure. to more, you know, volume carries touches, like wh- wh- whatever it may be. Like it, it's, it's, that is what we want to see, man. And the fact that he's yeah. doing that is, it's a beautiful thing. I just, he's got a great, great knack, great nose for the end zone, low center of gravity, this running back class, man, I, I don't mean to just always agree with consensus here, but I, I am 100% on board with them, man. Like, like I think yeah. this class is le- this running back class is legit. And it's the more I dive in, I'm like, damn, I, I almost want to like go the other way. Casey, like, I'm like, I do, I kind of stray away and be like, ah, this running class, this running back class really isn't that special. It's like, no, like th- they're actually good. This is yeah. actually a really oh, good sure. class with not only high end talent, but with the, with the depth as well. Yeah, with Nick Sing- the, the the pass protection stuff with Singleton, um, when you have the three down set, the size, the speed, pass catching ability, you don't want to be taken off of in, in a passing down situation because you can't pass block and then not be able to get to use the out of the backfield pass catching ability. So I think combining those things, like you mentioned, I think is, is very good for 
Singleton moving forward. So at 11, I'm taking Travion Henderson here, which, you know, I think last year you would have taken him in the first round. Two years ago, you would take him in the first round. There was a point where he was the, the everyone, he was the one one of, of running backs. Very talented player, uh, been through some stuff, been through some injury, came back for another year uh, there at Ohio State. Interesting that he came back. I thought he thought he could have came out last year and, and made some hay because it was a bit much weaker class that you mentioned kind of at the top of this, uh, Austin. But, you know, yep, yep. love the skill set from Travion. You know, good good speed there, can kind of do everything. He could be a workhorse. You know, I hate, hate to beat the workhorse thing, but you you do end up with a lot of guys in this class, and that's why it's intriguing to a lot of people is because there's, there's a skill set in there with all those guys that kind of lean towards – you know, something that we're missing in the in the league right now, which is, you know, more of a workhorse style back. The two hundy guys are are really out there just uh, trying to show everybody up right now. And you got to you got a class of some bigger boys coming in here uh, that could help revitalize and re reshape the landscape. And I think teams, you know, through the first couple first six weeks of NFL or whatever, you know, we're, we're seeing that we're needing to lean on the run a little bit more and teams that can run effectively are having a little bit more success, opening things up, helping win games. Everybody's in that, that cover two kind of shell deal there. Uh, and, and, and good running backs, I feel like are, are starting to be a little bit more recognized as being something that, that really helps your team on a week to week basis where it was, you know, you know, don't even don't don't running backs don't matter when I think, you know, we we've, we've cycled back through where, Hey, running backs could, really start making a difference again. And you see what, when you have a good rushing attack, what it can do for you, especially the, you know, the offense does one thing. The defense takes a minute to catch up. The defense I think is now caught up. Now we got maybe some smaller, faster guys on the field. Let's say, and we're going to play a little bit more of a shell, kind of keep everything in front of us. So, Hey, let's pound it a little bit more with maybe even a little bit bigger of a back. So Travion Henderson coming in 11 for me, take us home with 12 and then we'll get to some guys that uh, will for sure, if we do this five more times, we'll end up on this list at some point. So hit yeah. us up with who's the 112 there, Austin. Absolutely. 112, sticking with the running back theme. Casey, we're going to close it out with Ollie Gordon, Oklahoma mm. State's running back. Now, here another another big dog. I mean, we're talking 6'2", 225, right? This this class is, again, not only has the uh, the talent, they have the size too, man. Shout out to like Dylan Johnson, man. He's I know he hasn't quite succeeded in the NFL at least just yet or maybe he never does but like I think like a Dylan Johnson almost like a almost like a Brian Robinson Jr. to give you like a legitimate NFL name right in terms of a player comp but that's how I view Ollie Gordon right like just just this physically imposing really big running back former Doke Walker award winner uh, we're seeing him like man can you believe the fact that he caught 39 passes last year and, and like this year on pace for probably right around there as well, right? Like not only a really dominant runner, phenomenal receiver too, man. Uh, you know, the 68 missed tackles force last season, a, a thing of beauty right there. Uh, 45 carries last year of over 10 yards, over 1700 rushing yards last season. You know, I mean, 6.1 yards per carry. Now, granted, like this year, yes, it's been a little disappointing, right? To maybe put it politely, like not seeing nearly the production that we want to see so right. far. It's still early. It's okay, man. I, I just, I guess my argument would be you don't fall ass backwards into 1,700 rushing yards. You don't yeah. do that on accident, right? He's a good player. He's a really good, uh, really good running back. And I just, you know, again, like over 2,000 scrimmage yards, and led the FBS in rushing yards. This this is last season I'm talking about. And, and that was like despite a slow start to the season, right? Again, like this year, slow start. He's going to pick it up. He's going to get better. Uh, he was an absolute unit in back at uh, Trinity High School. He, he racked up over 2,500 rushing yards and 35 touchdowns as a senior. So yeah. uh, he's like, again, like just dude, dude was dominant then. And eight, it's clearly translating to college. And I believe it's going to translate into the NFL. Uh, we're, yeah. we're, this is, um, you know, sort of not in play style, but reminiscent of, and the same college, I think uh, like Chuba Hubbard put up yeah. UK and, and was yes. awesome. And then by the time he came out, yeah. people were kind of off of him and faded him a little bit because the production didn't stay at the highest level that it could have been. I like Chuba a little more than I think I like liked Gordon coming out here. Uh, very different players, but Ali Gordon's a very, very good player. That's that's no slight. And basically, I was kind of using the same rationale as you just did. It's like you don't just fall ass backwards into 
two fucking thousand yards rushing. Yeah. Right. You're a yeah. good player. It took Chuba a minute to get there because his team sucked. Uh, but now you're you're, you're getting a, a still a not great team, but a a good scheme. And look at how look at how well Chuba is doing right now as as far as uh you know yeah man running back in the league. G- Gordon a bit different in, in play style. You know, a bit more of 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 a bigger. I don't know. Seems give him a runway and he's good, right? That, that's no, that, kind of that's I a look great at. analogy, I like man. I, I like the Chuba call. I, I really like Chuba coming out. I was actually a little disappointed. I was like, damn, I, I, I didn't think Chuba was going to, you know, just never end up producing in the NFL. I, I really thought we we're going to see him have much more success. And Casey, never wrong, just early. That's right? exactly <laughs> what I was about to say. Nailed it. All right, let's go through a couple of guys that aren't on here. I think Carson Beck would be the first one that people are screaming about. Why is Carson Beck yeah. on here? For me, it doesn't move the needle for me. Like I just, I think he's fine. I think it's probably a good value, and I could be completely wrong here. And maybe it's just because you know, in the, in the couple of Georgia games that I watched this year, he just wasn't very sharp. It's not to say that he isn't and isn't a good player. Obviously, has, has done some good things there at Georgia. You know, and some people would say, "Oh, give me back over yours all day, every day." And that's fine. That's whatever. I just, I don't. He doesn't move the needle for me, much like yours probably doesn't move the needle for for other people. So that's why he wasn't on the list for me. Uh, man, I, I'm with you. I I haven't seen it from. I mean, clearly, I, obviously, my actions speak louder than the words because I didn't draft him in the first round in this mock draft. Man, I, I get the same feeling that how how I felt when I was evaluating Will Levis, uh, when I was evaluating mm-hmm. uh, even like JJ McCarthy. Man, like I I was not. I was just I couldn't get in on these players. Man, I was far from infatuated. I didn't like the film. I just at no point did I really feel like these players truly elevated their team dramatically or or will ultimately elevate an NFL franchise. And uh, that's kind of what worries me most. And I look at Carson Beck as a player that if I miss on him, that's OK. I'm going to go let another GM take the chance on him. I'm, ju- I'm just going to go. That That's really been my approach yeah. so far. So I'm rooting for him, man. I hope he proves me wrong, but uh, he's got to get better. He has to improve. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see what happens in this Texas game. You know, if he, if he comes out there and has a big, big game with, against there, he could be right back in some good graces. Uh, we just saw Dylan Gabriel put up a really nice performance against Ohio State, help them win. So, you know, he could be a guy that that people are uh, real excited about. Uh, the, the the big tight end right now is probably Loveland out of Michigan. And then, you know, I'm assuming Warren this week from Penn State is, is draft eligible yeah. um, and just, just put up a big, a big game. People are super excited about him. Um, some running backs here that we didn't get to that could easily be on this list. Devin Neal is one of my favorites uh, from last year. Really was hoping he would come out. Uh, he did not. Uh, Trevor Etienne didn't make the list, but you know, I'm sure he easily could have. Caleb Johnson from Iowa is having a great year, averaging eight point yards, eight yards a carry, 932 yards already. Dylan Sampson, Tennessee, uh, he's averaging 5.9, 699 yards from him. So there's there's a there's a bunch of good running backs here we didn't even get to and I'm sure the, you know the the running back from Rutgers is having a nice year I don't even I don't know if he's draft eligible or not the Washington Huskies have a have a running back that's that's playing pretty well too that I watched just watched that game the other day I'm drawing a blank on his name but so there's some good running backs in there and then of course wide receiver wise there's um drawing a blank on the Stanford wide receiver name did you mention Emeka Igbuka or Isaiah Bond yet? No, I'm about to go through all those guys yeah. right now. Um, but I was I was trying to find the the uh, Stanford wide receiver name, drawing a blank on him. But Igbuka obviously easily should have been probably on this first round. I'm sure people are flipping out about that. Isaiah Bond also very mm-hmm. uh, intriguing player. Trey Harris, uh, he almost he was on the tip of my tongue multiple times here. Kyron Lacy, uh, Jalen Royals, Restrepo from Miami. Wells, the other old Miss wide receiver, um, Tez Johnson, uh, Horton from Colorado State, Evan Stewart uh, from Oregon. So tons and tons of more guys. So a- as you can see, you know, this list will change, evolve. Our picks will change, evolve. Uh, but there is there is a, you know, a, a nice class here through, you know, from where we're at right now, seemingly through, you know, we could get through a second round right now and still, I think, be picking some guys that we we feel pretty good about, right? Oh man, I I was so bummed when Tr- Tory Horton didn't come out last year. I I, mm. I I that surprised me, man. Speaking of uh Travion Henderson, I mean he, that was another player obviously, but but Tro- uh, Tory Horton I I really thought was coming out, you know, back-to-back 1100 yard seasons, eight plus touchdowns. I uh, just an absolute 
dog for uh for Colorado State. So mm-hmm. I just man. Yeah, I thought uh, I thought for sure he was I, th- I might have even done a show about him uh yeah. last year. He's a good good player, man. But uh yeah. yeah, this class, this class is fun. I know we're we're still so early in a case we've got a long way to go. There's a lot of fun players to talk about. Taj Brooks, Texas Tech. Mm-hmm. Uh so yeah, t- ton of good uh options out there running back class could get a nice injection here and you know like i said that i think the high-end wide receivers are going to end up being a, a pretty fun class and highly debated of, of which running backs they should go ahead of or not and some people will always take them instead of but i we love running backs on this show so uh we got we got a whole bunch of running backs today and for your pleasure again you can go check out austin at Austin Abbott FF on the Twitters, two B's and two T's and two F's. You can come check out the FF Dynasty at the FF Dynasty on the Twitters. Come check us out on the Patreon side of things, $5 holler, get you an extra episode plus a bunch of extra stuff. Got a free Discord as well if you're not interested in the $5 holler or just hit us up with a five-star review. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. We'll be hitting many, many mocks of rookie startup. We're going to be hammering all sorts of rebuilds coming up here soon all sorts of dynasty content for your pleasure give you everything you need to know coming into winning championships out of this season to building a championship roster next season uh we're real excited about it austin abbott will be along for the journey with us as always very much appreciated fun show because it's uh you know it almost doesn't even matter because we're, we're so far out but it's good to start talking about these guys and and figuring out who you're liking, who you're not liking, and and doing di- di- deep diving on these guys a little bit. For sure, man. Let's. Uh, I'm I'm ready to get the FF out of here. I gotta go check waivers, brother. We gotta gotta put those waiver claims in. We're uh, we're still grinding redraft, man. We were right Let's in the same things. This season's Let's been uh, been on a heater this season. I uh, I'm not I'm not complaining, man. But uh, yeah, I'm my, still, I think I've only got forward. one redraft league, and it's with you. Uh, but yeah. my my dynasty teams are right. pretty strong right now let's go you love Lock to can see happen it. quickly though <laughs> <laughs> yeah check back in in a week yeah all right man P- appreciate you peace